When psychologists talk about personality, they tend to compartmentalize personality into five different traits or categories. And those they label with the acronym O-C-E-A-N, OCEAN, it makes it very easy to remember. Well, what are these five components of uh, human personality? What are these five traits? And are they seen in people with Asperger's syndrome, people who are autistic? And let's take a look at these. Number one, the O in OCEAN is openness. Now, when we talk about openness, what we're talking about is being receptive to things like new ideas, receptive to things like new experiences. And it kind of depends on which of those two things you're talking about. But if you're talking about openness to new ideas, not only are people with Asperger's syndrome open to new ideas, we tend to be the one who come up with the new ideas. So yeah, we're very open when it comes to that. But when it comes to new experiences, um, that, that's hard to call because it depends on the individual. But uh, Aspies, you know, people with autism do like routines. They don't necessarily like new experiences, but again, it depends on the individual because you can have routines and you can also have new experiences. I don't see why those would have to clash. So I would give Aspies, people with autism, a high score on openness with some reservation when it comes to new experiences. And that is because uh, sometimes, you know, we run on this routine track. It's hard to get us off of that. But it's on that track where we come up with our new ideas. So it's kind of like both would apply. Number two, the C in Ocean, OC, is conscientiousness. And what we mean by that is, you know, kind of awareness uh, to organization, productiveness, being responsible. And every Aspie I know is very conscientious. They're very uh, aware of their surroundings. Again, almost when they're in the social setting, they're very much aware of their, their surroundings. But I've no Aspies, they would walk into a room and let's say it's a, it has a tile floor, you know, little square tiles. And uh, some of these people walk into a room and they count the tiles. I mean, they're just that conscientious. If they don't do it on purpose, kind of like it's automatic. I mean, they count everything. They could tell you how many ceiling tiles there are, you know, and they, when they leave the place, they can describe it, tell you the colors that are on the wall, tell you if there are any pictures on the wall. They could tell you what were in the pictures. They can describe those. They could tell you all about the colors. You know, somebody walks into a restaurant, uh, they can tell you what the ceiling was like and how the whole thing was decorated. They just very observant, very, um, very conscientious. I'm not sure I fall into that category to, to that extreme, but you know, I don't count tiles, but uh, I'll go into a place and I'll pay attention to the decor because I think it's, yeah, I think it's kind of interesting. But uh, people with Asperger's syndrome also tend to be productive when they're given an opportunity to be productive. Problem, as you know, with uh, having autism, it's hard to find a job because you don't fit in socially. So it doesn't matter how well you do the job, how productive you are. It doesn't matter if you show up on time every time without fail. You never call in sick or hardly ever call in sick. Still hard to keep employment because of uh, that social thing, again, is just difficult. But are we conscientious? Are people with Asperger's syndrome conscientious? Uh, I would give Asperger's, Aspies rather, a very high score on conscientiousness. Maybe you would have a different idea. But yeah, we tend to be responsible. We tend to be productive. We tend to be uh, highly, highly organized with lots and lots of spreadsheets. Number three, the E in the acronym OCEAN is extroversion which is the opposite of introversion. And we probably don't even need to talk about this because you already know most people with Asperger's syndrome, few notable exceptions, are very introverted. We don't like to be around people. Uh, that may, we'll talk about this in a moment, but that makes us a little bit stressful, a little bit anxious, sometimes a lot stressful and anxious. So uh, I don't like to go where there are people. Uh, airports, you know, I can walk through an airport. I don't like it, but I can do it. I go to the grocery store. At six o'clock in the morning when no one's there. That's my preference. Can I go to church? Don't really want to, but if I absolutely positively had to, okay, there's a funeral or wedding, I'll show up. But it's not the church that I don't like. It's the uh, it's just the pressure of being around people. What about um, small talk? Well, as I get older, 
And I don't know about you, but as I get older, I'm learning to adapt. Still very uncomfortable, but just to me, it's just a matter of common courtesy to be nice to people. When they talk to you, I don't want to come across as rude or aloof or standoffish, so I'll try to have a conversation. Doesn't always work because it's hard to think when you're talking to somebody because your brain scrambles. And when your brain scrambles, uh, your speech scrambles. So, you, you know, it's kind of hard to have a conversation when you can't finish a sentence or you can't pronounce a word. But I try. Anyhow, I'm getting used to it. But when I was a young kid, you know, I couldn't talk at all. It was all virtually impossible. With a few exceptions of some very close friends, maybe immediate family members, uh, in the teen years, I got a little bit better at having some conversation, but not very much. But throughout most of my adult life, uh, very cumbersome. Having any kind of uh, social connection to people, and a lot of people really got mad at me because they thought I was being arrogant or rude or inconsiderate or aloof or whatever. But extroversion, yeah, I'd give that one a very low score for people with Asperger's syndrome because we just not extroverts, but there are a few exceptions. There are some people with uh, Asperger's syndrome who uh, you can't get them to shut up. That's the way they deal with stress. Rather than withdrawing, they kind of charge into it. So, yeah, there are some exceptions. Number four is agreeableness. That's the A in the acronym OCEAN. And by agreeableness, we're talking about um, effective empathy, compassion, being respectful, trusting others. My life experience, my life's laboratory, as I have observed my behavior and the behavior of other people who are autistic, is we score too high on agreeableness. We are so agreeable that we are agreeable to a fault. We do just about anything. Why is that? Well, I think one thing, we like to be people pleasers because we tend to think that uh, it will be reciprocated. We like to be people pleasers because we think those people we are pleasing will then like us and we will be accepted. We have a deficit, a great deficit in being accepted by other people. So we go out on a limb, so to speak, tell people out, to be nice to them, to be considerate. And there's nothing wrong with those things, but when you do it to the point where people think you're weird and they think you're gullible and they think you're vulnerable, they take advantage of you. And, uh, you know, they just kind of leave you out to dry. So agreeableness, ask me score high on that, too high. My opinion, it's all just my opinion. These are my ideas based upon my experience in life's laboratory. The N in the acronym OCEAN is neuroticism. A little explanation. What that means is we have tendencies. That's somebody who has tendencies toward anxiety and depression, easily stressed out. Most Aspies I know would uh, score very high on neuroticism. Now, you may not display it, you may not show it, but it's inside, yeah, it's there. And that's why we have meltdowns, because we are very stressed, this is my opinion again, but we become very stressed, very anxious, we become depressed, but we don't express it until we have a meltdown that it all comes out at once, kind of like a pent up volcano just uh, explodes, and there it is, and then it's done. And people think we had a temper tantrum. It's got nothing to do with temper, got nothing to do with anger, really. How would they know? Well, they don't know, but uh, we know because we experience it. So when it comes to neuroticism, we tend to have this problem yeah, with anxiety that is uh, particularly triggered by any kind of social environment, uh, the workplace, um, uh, what about going to church? You know, I go to funerals, I go to weddings. I don't like it, but I do it because uh, you really need to. Is you know, just a matter of being courteous, respectful. Uh, going to school is really difficult. Going to the grocery, I prefer to go at 6 o'clock in the morning when there's virtually nobody there. A couple other people, there are other Aspies usually. Um, so that is my experience with neuroticism and my observation of other people with uh, Asperger syndrome, with autism, I would say, uh, as if we understand eroticism as just being high, scoring high, with tendencies toward anxiety and depression, uh, that's, that's kind of very obvious, particularly when it comes to uh, research. Um, how many... Um, how many efforts have been made to observe depression in people with autism? The answer is quite a few. 
And it's really, you know, beyond dispute that people with autism score very high on depression. I mean, when, you know, basically nobody likes you. That's hard not to be depressed. That may be an overstatement. Nobody likes you, but that's the way it seems. When you go to work, you're rejected. When you go to school, you're rejected. Uh, when you're just out and about, complete strangers, they sense, you know, that uh, uncanny valley personality trait. Something a little bit off with this guy, with this woman, and uh, uh, they reject us. So, yeah, that stresses us. That causes depression. That causes anxiety. That's neuroticism. So I would say we score very high on that. I'd kind of be curious, you know, what you guys think. If you think uh, I'm right on these, maybe I missed something and other people need to know about it. So you might want to put that in the comments so other people can hear your opinion, which, by the way, is probably just as valid as mine. We can talk together about these things. There are two rectangles on the screen. The reason they are there is because, well, it's to give you the opportunity to continue our conversation. So if you want to keep hanging out, just click one of those two rectangles and the conversation will continue. But if not, thanks for stopping by and see you all next time.